This is my love letter to the land. My love comes directly from the moon. Grandmother moon who brings us light in the darkest of times when our hearts hurt the most. She reminds me of air, the blessings from the trees. Everything in this world is a prayer. Each element, each relation is a teaching and a reason to give thanks. She teaches me language. She says we come from the land birthed from Mother Earth. Listen to what the ocean is telling you. Notice the trees who talk to the wind. Everything we do in this physical world will be felt by the earth, imprinted on the land. As long as we continue to take care of our Mother Earth, she will continue to provide for us as our Father Sky will watch over us. so much. I hope we see a northern spotted owl this time. Oh, maybe on our favorite tree. Right where my grandpa said he saw one, decades ago. I love hearing this story. When my grandparents would take me camping here, my grandpa would always talk about the honor of seeing an owl. Let's hike to our tree tomorrow. And spend the whole day there. I'm so happy you take us here with you. It's my sacred place. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to us too. Here, I got it. It smells so good out here. I'm already breathing better. That's awesome. You brought your inhaler though, just in case? Asher, that machinery we saw, do you think it has something to do with the pipeline project moving forward? Maybe. I hope the project gets put on hold with the Species at Risk Act. Same. I can't believe there are only three northern spotted owls left in BC. 
Being in the trees brings you right back down to her. Tell you what, I'll pay you 20 bucks to tell my parents I went with you. I have a friend in Chilliwack that I can stay with. Nope, $20 is not nearly enough. Besides, this camping trip will be fun. But I'm not here for fun. I'm here because my parents work for your parents and they want a promotion. At least you get to wear nice clothes. You have a nice house. Oh, that reminds me. Look what I'm planning for my room. Hello, darlings. I have arrived. Esme? This is a surprise. I saw your Instagram post talking about your annual camping trip. And, as you may know, I happen to know this area very well. So I thought I would join you. How did you get here? My father's chauffeur drove us to the trail. I almost forgot. This is Brock. His parents work for my parents. We are family friends. Hi, Brock. I'm Willow. That's my sister, Rachel, and that's Asher. So you're Rachel. Hi, sweetie. I'm Esme, your big sister's friend. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm going to go look for our geocache. Esme, you and Brock can set up over there. You brought a tent, right? We're all prepared. Let's go, Brock. Who are they again? I've known Willow since we were little. She graduated last year, so we don't see each other as much anymore. She's into science, she's super nice, and super smart. I thought it was just gonna be us, your sister, and Galen. I did too. Where is Galen? He's not usually late. Um, no reception. I'll check the trail. It'll be good to see him. I haven't seen him since our trip here last summer. I think I actually saw him earlier this summer, when I was visiting Quinn. He was driving a big truck. Oh. Uh, Galen's here and he brought more people. Galen! Willow! Yo, what's up? So we're late, we got a little bit lost. Uh, this is... Rowan. Yep, and I'm Michael. Uh, I work with Michael at the restaurant and... And I'm the only reason these two do anything fun. I was... Told there was a party, but it seems someone greatly over-exaggerated. Well, I don't think it's the party you'd be looking for. We're camping. Camping? Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Woo! Camping! Sorry, Willow. I'm sorry I lied to you guys. I wanted you to come with me because I get so anxious driving alone on the highway and I want us to socialize more. Hey, man, listen, it's all good. I mean, listen, I'm working so much that I barely got time for anything, so I'm happy no matter what we're up to. If you want to stay in camp, we can make room. If not... Uh, nope, we'll stay, thank you. It'll be fun. I'm Willow, that's Rachel, and that's Asher. And I'm Esmeralda Genevieve. Anastasia Serafina Kingsley Lockwood. But you can call me Esme. We met at that party a while back. Hey, yeah. Nice to see you. And you're Rowan, right? We were at the party too. I remember you. <laughs> well, what they mean to say is hi, nice to see you again. Get your inhaler. Okay. Galen knows I hate camping. I'm cold. My back is aching from the hike. I already know I'm not going to like any of the people here. Shh. And I can't believe that Esmeralda is here. You remember the party? How she kept bragging about all of her luxurious designer clothing? People like her really pissed me off. Okay, okay, look, I, I hear you all right, but just Please, don't get us kicked out. I mean, seriously, when is the last time the three of us have hung out? And it's great to be out of the city, you know? Take, take your minds off everything. You know, with COVID and all. Yeah, well, this had better be good. There's a reason that I'm the one who picks the parties. Yo, Brock. Hey, Michael, what's up? Hey.
Hey, Asher, right? <laughs> you and your friends do this often? Every year. Not usually with this many people, but I think we can make it work. What are all the sticks for? It's firewood. I'm gonna start building a campfire. Are you sure you know what you're doing? Yes. My grandparents stuck me camping here all the time when I was a kid. They taught me how to build a fire before I could even talk. Plus, I'm an earth ranger. Oh, you are, are you? Are we even supposed to have campfires here? What? Worried one of your many outfits is gonna catch on fire? What are you? All I'm saying is, count your blessings, princess. Uh, there's no fire ban here. I'm gonna cook the veggie dogs. Got any regular hot dogs? Nope, I'm a vegetarian. I brought takeout from the restaurant. Thank God. Let's make s'mores. I'll get the chocolate. It's so sick you're here. I thought I would just have to hang out with these. Whoa, don't get nasty on me. But honestly though, all this planet ranger stuff, it's just getting me down. I mean, listen, when, when Galen invited me, I was under the impression that we were here to party up in the woods, not take bark samplings. Exactly. Uh, between you and me, what's going on with the planet and climate change is making me feel really anxious, even though I barely know what's going on. Uh, yeah. No, I, uh, I know how you feel, but, uh, listen, all right? Just follow my strategy. Don't think about it. I mean, you know, come on. Who needs all that extra stress in their lives? Yeah. Well, you're right. Yeah. Finally. Nice. Well, let's go get some food. All right. What we miss? It's getting really dark. Did anyone bring a flashlight? I have a... Ah! <laughs> Great timing, Lex. You scared them so bad. Hey, everyone. Hey. hey. Quinn, this is a nice surprise. That was not funny. Where did he... They come from? What? Are you scared? This is my boyfriend, Quinn, and his brother, Lex. Lex lives around here, what? so I... You don't live in this forest, do you? What if I did? <laughs> with the otters. You can't live in this forest. My parents have a lease on the land. Wait, how do your parents? It's business. Esme, do you mind? I have missed you so much. Same here. How are you? How are things with your dad? Let's just say I'm glad to be here. 
away from it all. How are you? Not great. Looks like more clear cutting is going to be happening on my end of the forest. Oh no. I know how much the treehouse means to you. And Lex. You guys both built it up to you just moved into your foster house together, right? Yeah. I should get back. Make sure everything's okay. Wanna come with? I'm gonna hang out here. I better see you later though. Where's Quinn? He just left. He went back to the treehouse. Dang it. He did it again. I've been trying to convince him to come back home. I want to talk to him more about it. But he's not a huge fan of the idea, so he runs off. I see. He told me he was pretty determined to live in the treehouse all summer. He can't. This forest is private property. Esme, can I steal away for a minute? Sure. Look. I don't know what that was all about, but could you tone it down, please? Yeah, sorry. This trip is important for Rachel. I see. She didn't wake up two months ago. Luckily, I was there and I was able to save her. She has a respiratory disease. We thought it was COVID. It really shook all of us. Um, Mom and Dad have a new air system in the house, which is helping. But she really just breathes a lot better out here. Will. The old tree is down. And the eagle nest. Must have been blown over by the big windstorm a few months ago. A lot of trees have been knocked down lately. And Quinn said that the damn loggers had to get over by his end of the forest. <laughs> what do you mean, damn loggers? They're supposed to be coming in. What? What do you mean they're supposed to be? My father got a tree farm license and got the okay to cut the trees down. This is the job my dad got. I've been helping him drive the trucks out here. Oh, they shouldn't be removing the trees. It completely destroys the ecosystem. I don't see what the big deal is. They're just trees. Just trees that are interconnected by mycelium. Mycelium what? Mycelium. A white fungus that is nature's equivalent to the brain's neural pathways? Trees can feel everything that is happening in a forest. Did you know? There is a mother tree in every forest, and if she senses that one of her saplings is in trouble, she sacrifices herself, even if that means she dies for them. They're still just trees. So what if one or two gets cut down? There's like a billion more where they came from. True but billions are being cut down every day. We rely on trees. I breathe way better out here. Forest animals rely on trees too, like tree bulls, murrelets, owls. Okay, okay, I get it. trees. More like obsessed. They're acting like the world is going to end if a few trees get cut down. Willow with all her talk about my feel and whatnot. Please spare me. They don't understand the importance of protecting an ecosystem. I know and this one is protecting. The three northern spotted owls that still live in Canada in the wild all live here in the Fraser Valley. I really hope we see one. Maybe if we stay up late to stargaze, we'll see one. Asher, do you know what Esme is talking about with the logging and this being private property? Quinn said that the logging is along what looks like the pipeline extension project. I hope her special tree is okay. Do you really think it's so bad if they cut down some trees? Of course not. They're trees. They grow back. Yeah, exactly. And plus, it's not like they're just being cut down for the sake of destroying stuff. I mean, look, we need paper, we need farmland, and we need oil. It's just how the world works. This is our favorite camping trip that we look forward to all year. I don't want any more fighting. I get enough of that at home with my dad. Let's try to have fun. Let's look for a geocache. I have an owl brochure to put in it.
Oh, I just remembered. Our geocache, it's buried by your favorite tree. Cache? You bury cache? <laughs> no, no, it's a geocache. You hide a container with objects in it for people to find, and then they put other objects in it for other people to find. Well, I think it would be fun to find cash in a container. Anyway, Lex has been showing me amazing photos of animals he, he, he took of animals here in the forest. You have to see them. Ooh, any of river otters? They're so cute. What? You have a photo of a northern spotted owl. Lex, that is so rare. My grandpa said he saw one, I think, back in the 80s. This is incredible. How did you take that photo? I took it a few summers ago. I keep coming out of here to see if I can find it again. Us too. I brought a brochure about signs to look for. I want to see it. Ah, <laughs> uh, Michael, is Brock in there? Uh, nope, just Rowan, Gail, and me. I'm starting to get really worried. I think he disappeared or something. Uh, well, maybe a, uh, a Sasquatch. Sasquatch got him. What? Well, yeah, we're only about, what, uh... Half an hour? Yeah, half an hour away from, a uh, Sasquatch Provincial Park. <laughs> Wait, that's a real place? I'll go look for him. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm familiar with the path. I think we should all just leave. Well, I'm okay with that. No, I have to leave the truck here. My dad is picking it up. I'll be right back. I hope Brock is okay and that he's just protecting my parents' land. Their land? I respectfully acknowledge that I am a visitor from the Mohican Nation on this non-surrendered Coast Salish territory, home of the Stolo Nation. My parents have the legal papers saying they leased the land. Nature doesn't recognize our writing, so technically those papers have no worth. That is not true. We really enjoy being here. It's special to us. And we have named a tree as our own. But I believe no one truly owns the land. We're an integrated part of it. Exactly. No one owns the Earth. It's its own planet that we happen to live on. It's too late for the human race, anyway. Whoa, hey, don't say that. Face it, all the protests in Vancouver are pointless. This planet is crumbling beneath our feet and it's going to swallow us all up. Uh, Will, I have an idea. Good idea. It's time for scary stories. Ooh. Well, Rowan here just shared the first scary story. Aren't you guys worried that Rock is missing and now Galen? Oh, pfft, they'll be fine, but they will be missing out on a few tales of death and dismemberment. <laughs> um, does this look like the right crowd to you? Uh, well, here goes my material. I have a story. Things in the dark. Crack. A group of friends are in a dark forest. Crack. A quiet fire is burning. Screech. Faces leap out of the flames with high shrieking screams. What was that? Was it a bear? A Sasquatch? Ah! Oh! There are huge logging trucks headed this way! Dad is driving one of those trucks! These are the trucks Quinn was talking about! Let's get out of here! Let's get to our tree!
Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, we have heard the people speak and we have listened. You want jobs? You want prosperity? Well, Pradio Incorporated's new pipeline will bring you all that and more. We will harvest all the natural oil made by our own sweet Mother Earth and deliver it to you. Pipelines are people. Pipelines are power. No more of our women, men, and babies will pay the price for Canada and industry to carry on its dirty work. We need to follow and go back to what allowed our people to thrive for over 10,000 years on this land that's now called Canada. Just talking. Our time, it's tick-tocking. We're bystanders in our own destruction. New generations too tired to even function. Forrest, I hope you hear me. Get my love letters and my lyrics. I hope the sunset's still the same after the skyline's done burning. Fading out our sweater weather. Science says it's never gonna get better. Still, I'm hoping for a new forever where we can build a different future. Old man's beards on the trees bring back our green brothers, our treasures. But maybe this is how it works. Maybe our world's a phoenix firebird. Light it on fire and it becomes a new artwork. So now's the time to make your voice heard. Keep talking and screaming now. No more bystanders in this old town. We're tired of just talking because our time is tick-tocking. This is a movement with millions upon millions of people telling world leaders to act on the science and demanding a safe future for us and for everyone and together we will make a change. This is just the beginning. We will continue. Because change is coming whether you like it or not. Thank you. there? Asher, are you okay? I was so worried. Quinn, I've been so worried about you too. What happened? The loggers, they cut down the rest of the trees in my area and the tree house, it's gone. I'm so sorry. All those protests, fighting for what we believe in, now this? 
I can't believe it either. They took my home, and the homes of all the animals. Everything's wrecked. How does anyone expect to fix any of this? He's back. The one living on your parents' property. Trespasser, you better get off my property. Who cares whose property it is? It's getting destroyed. My parents said they would restore the forest afterwards. We can trust them. I don't trust your parents. <laughs> They're just removing trees along the pipeline, which happens to be going through the campground. You, of all people, should understand that, Brock. I do, but I think this is wrong. So what about shares and the stupid pipeline? There are things that are alive, plants and trees and things we need to live here, in this forest, in this world, that the pipeline project is destroying right in front of our very own eyes. This forest matters, the world matters, and we need to put an end to climate change. This isn't bringing an end to climate change, but it's how my parents make money. Besides, I'm sure we'll all benefit from the profits of the pipeline and oil later on down the road. At least, that's what my parents always say. Everything is about money with you. Your parents are liars. They're liars who will destroy and destroy until nothing is left, and nothing can go back to the way it was. What do you care? You're just like them. My own parents, too. None of you care about the trees or the animals. Do not call my parents liars. You don't know them or me or my story, so just stop. And don't you dare say I don't care, because I care a whole lot. My parents rely on your parents for survival, which means that I rely on your parents. I hate it. I hate this pipeline. What if there's an oil spill? What then? Then the whole ecosystem gets damaged. And we all depend on ecosystems for clean air and climate security. Lex, are you okay? Is the forest okay? There isn't many trees left. The water's polluted. The forest we've known since childhood. Destroyed. How did it come to this? Because humans are greedy, destructive creatures. Simple as that. Did you find our tree? No. Let's keep going. We are getting closer. I know it. We have to find our tree. This can't be helping climate change. The world is going to end. Can we all just stop saying that the world's going to end? I, I mean, this, this planet has been through ice ages and meteors. It's bounced back every time. Not with people on it. All we've done is kill and destroy. This is called karma. This is not the karma that we deserve. This is the karma that corrupt people deserve. We are all contributors. It doesn't matter what each person deserves. It's about what we do to help. It's about solutions. You're right. It's about what we can do to help. I guess we can all be our own superheroes. Here we are. One last time, we thought that time was an illusion, and it helped us get by. It's difficult to admit that I was wrong, but I guess that's what I'm doing with this song. Moonlight always shines on purple roses during dream time, but we worship each other's rights instead of standing in an open field. By, but God created mountains in the sea and thought the world could use us, you and me. Down. No, they're not.
I know you want an easier life. I know you want it faster, stronger, better. I am not bringing you a pipeline. I am bringing you evolution. Our planet is changing, yes, but when has it not? We grow and adapt, or we die. Is survival not for the fittest? Does the big fish not eat the little fish? After all, aren't we the alpha predator? This is simply how nature works. It's the best business model there is. Nothing I can do can help prevent the world from burning. I'm really scared about climate change. I want to know how to help. Just follow my strategy. Don't think about it. I'm way too scared to care too much. I don't want to think about it too much, but we need the trees to breathe. I don't know what to do, and I'm scared I'll do something wrong. I won't allow anyone or anything I love to leave me. I'm sure we'll all benefit from the profits from the pipeline and oil later on down the road. Do you think we can stop them from cutting down our tree? We have to try. For the forest. I wish we could go back to a time where we shared with the forest. Like the First Nations people do. Hey, did you know that forest in Cree is not? No. Nah. Sounds like now. Sounds beautiful. I didn't know you spoke Cree. My grandpa's Cree. I don't know that much about that part of my family, but... I want to learn. I'm only a quarter, but I still feel like it means something. Knowing where you come from, your roots, you feel more connected to everyone in the environment. No one owns the earth, but everyone has a responsibility to take care of it. She is our nurturer, and we are her caregivers. I was feeling really anxious about climate change, but knowing my roots and what so many people have done before me to help protect the land, I feel like I should do something. Like, I can do something. We all can, Brock. It's just a matter of putting your heart forward. Climate change is scary and can make you feel like you as one person can't do much. But there is so much that one person can do, especially when others are doing it too. Thank you. <sighs> Damn mosquitoes. Asher, do you have any more lemon oil? Yes. Here. Actually, I wrote a song for Asher and his love of lemons that I'd like to share. I'm still living in this place where everything is all the same. Burn down the skyline, leaving nowhere else to hide. The moon and the sun are too close to us. And the stars are falling from the sky But oh, what can we do, what can we do? I'm still living in a time where change is just a lie Alone in this world, lost the orders by my side Fighting for tomorrow's future And the world that's getting lit on fire but oh, what can we do, what can we do? Might save the world with a magic lamp And its drops of sunlight turn into music When this song's at its end, our world might just be condemned So let's have fun before then And save the world with our magic lamp That was amazing, Quinn. Thanks, bro. I've been playing a lot of music out here. It's been grounding. Those workers better not come back here. <laughs> They'll have to hear from me. How dare they destroy this place? That's my father you're talking about. You don't even know him. I know enough. Come on, guys. This is supposed to be a peaceful protest. Lex is right. Peace promotes peace. Anger promotes anger. Oh, jeez, it's already morning. I don't know how deep in the woods we are, but I have to somehow get back to Vancouver for my shift, which is later today. 
You won't have a job if there is no planet. Yeah, but I need my job. I depend on it. Michael! Yeah? Oh, remember how I was feeling really anxious about climate change? Yeah? Well, I've realized that doing what I can to help is making me feel less anxious. Look, Brock, all the protests in the world are going to change the minds of the people that are actually killing us off. Face it, it's pointless. But it doesn't have to be. No matter how small, everything we do matters. Doing something is way better than doing nothing. <laughs> oh, God, I was not expecting this out of you. Look, I already have to break my back working minimum wage just to survive in this world, all right? I don't have time for this. I was scared. Still am. And I think that you are too. So? Do you think I want to spend the rest of my life in fear? Fill my day with even more anxiety? Waste my whole life worrying about a doomed planet? I used to think the same thing. I had no hope. But I've realized that there's no point in thinking like that. To throw up our hands and walk away from our planet? From every future generation? I just, I don't want to think about it, okay? I just don't! I get that. Just not today, okay? Maybe someday, just not today! Okay. I can't believe things have gotten this far. How could this happen? How could we have done this to Mother Earth? I know. It's hard to fathom. Look, I know I don't show my feelings very often, Rachel, but know that I love you so much. That will never change. At least we have our tree and each other. Michael was right. This won't stop the people who are really hurting our planet. Maybe the human race should just die off. We're the root of the problem, so the Earth is better off without us. The Earth will always survive. It'll simply enter another cycle of life. Finally, someone who understands where I'm coming from. Wait. You. I do understand. Sort of. We aren't so different, you and I. I never thought you'd give up on fighting. Oh, I'm not done fighting. I'm just tired of trying to find solutions for other people. I want to focus on what I can do, what I am capable of. It doesn't matter what you're capable of. You're only human. You can't save the world by yourself. Only human? That sounds so degrading. We are capable of so much. I'm still going to try and help protect the Earth in any way I can, with peaceful actions from my heart, and protect the ones I love. The animals need us to protect them. We are the only species who can. Seriously? We're the ones who massacred them in the first place. Humans are careless. It's like we want to burn. If that's how it is, then maybe we should. Who's to stop the Earth from getting rid of us? We're parasites. Not all of us. There are those who choose to destroy and those who serve to protect all life. You're right, Willow. We aren't the problem. We're just bystanders. It's, it's those awful companies who mow down billions of trees just to farm their precious oil. The rich schmucks who will trample over anything to get what they want and all the mindless sheep who work for them. They did this with no regard for what anyone else thinks about it. Watch what you're saying. That's my dad you're talking about. They're not bad people. They just need to work. 
Living in Vancouver is expensive. If my dad hadn't taken that job, we wouldn't have food on the table. There are tons of jobs out there. He didn't have to pick the one that destroys billions of living things. These corporations will commit horrible acts against the environment under the guise of economy and growth, but it is nothing more than a sick need for monetary gain. They always say they'll fix it, but they won't. It's left up to us to solve all the problems that they cause, and what the hell are we supposed to do? Whatever we can! You know what, Rowan? I've had enough of your pessimistic attitude. All this time you've mainly just yelled and complained. Why won't you take some of that energy and use it to actually do something helpful? Take responsibility for your own actions instead of criticizing those of others. We may be only human, but we're more powerful than you think! I Galen, I never meant to... We're all confused and scared, so we're acting up. Let's not fight each other. All I'm saying is we should be turning our anger into positive action. I know I will, so what do you say? Will you join me? Yeah, Galen. I think I will. Rachel and I got the help of a lawyer from EcoJustice to send a plea to the government about the Northern Spotted Owl. We're hoping it puts an end to the pipeline project. Or at least a temporary hold. Aren't those owls endangered? Yes, almost extinct. Rachel and I have been trying to find them for years. The lawyer said we have a good chance with our case using the Species at Risk Act if we can prove that they still live out here. It's amazing that Lex saw one. That photo will help our case. It's devastating. There are 160 species endangered in BC, including birds, mammals, and fish. The salmon will be under even more threat because of this pipeline project. Isn't there like 41,000 endangered species worldwide? 41,400, to be exact. And we'll be on that list if we don't take care of the one world we've got. The whole pipeline project was dumb from the start. I wish there was more incentive for job transitioning from, for, from oil to alternate energy systems like geothermal. Then my dad wouldn't have to ruin our earth for work. We can restore the forest. We have to. It can't only happen here, though. All forests need protection and action. Greta Thunberg is doing that for us. We just need to join her. Oh, Rach, I know you like Greta, but she is just one person, and everyone is looking to her to lead them as some sort of savior. We all need to lead ourselves. Most of the kids at my school didn't even know what climate change was before Greta. When she understood the problem, she knew she had to do something and be part of the solution. She always says, listen to science, listen to the truth. I just think that it's so inspiring that she's helping people all over the world take climate action. Wait, how old are you? Thirteen. Point taken. We just need to do more than be in awe of her. We have to take action, like we are with the Northern Spotted Owl. I can relate, Rachel. I think highly of Autumn Peltier here in Canada, the indigenous water protector, who's raising awareness to the undrinkable water in her people's nation. The government needs to do something about this and all the other nations who have undrinkable water. Something I've learned since finding out my indigenous roots is the important care system and taking care of Mother Earth as a way of life. I'm all for doing what we can for this beautiful planet. It's our home. Okay. Um. Listen up, everybody. Uh, you guys are all stronger than I'll ever be. I, I'd like to be here to fight with you all, but I just, I don't think I can. I, I think it's better if I leave. Wait, Michael, hold on. You don't have to go anywhere. No, 
No, I, I, look, I spent the whole time I was here denying everything I heard. I, I barely lifted a finger for anybody. I mean, you, you guys are all ready and willing to fight, and I'm just not. I'm not ready yet. I, I don't know how you just take the stress and pressure of saving the world, because I, I can't. You don't have to be a fighter. You can help in so many other ways. It's in the little things you do, like making an effort to recycle, or buying a reusable straw, or choosing not to support corporations that are big polluters. And maybe you aren't ready yet, but people change, and you can too. Whatever you do, you'll still be our friend. I won't let my new fire for protesting get in the way of us hanging out. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I Look, maybe I'll join you guys at a protest someday, you know, and I've got some other things sorted out. Don't sweat it. We'll be waiting for you. Esme, are you all right? I just... I feel so guilty about everything. Look, don't go beating yourself up over it. I... Nobody's perfect. It's human to make mistakes. And look, what your parents do is not your fault. She should well, feel guilty. Rowan. Have you any concern whatsoever for the land and protecting it? Or is it all just more money for you to buy more things? I know, but... But what? Rowan, that's enough. I'm glad you've grown passionate about protecting the environment, but yelling at people and attacking them for things that are out of their control is not the way. I don't see how rebuilding this forest could ever really help it go back to the way it was. I see now how the whole ecosystem gets destroyed. I, I need to talk to my parents about their company and the negative impact it has on the world. I can understand that. Look, I, I shouldn't have yelled at you. And I guess I shouldn't hate you just because you're wealthy. If you ever want to come to a protest when we're back in Vancouver, give me a call. We'd love to have you there. Thanks. Well, as of today, I'm officially at my very first protest. While I'll know it'll take some time getting used to this whole climate change thing, I think I'm on the right track now. Maybe instead of making this our yearly trip, we can come back every month and gather more evidence so the pipeline project can be put on hold permanently. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, and we can maybe invite more people so they can help us too. I could ask some of my friends and people from work. I'll talk to our local MP. I'll find some people too. Maybe convince Ro and Michael to join us? Oh, you know I'm in. I love that. Plus, we can see each other more often. I could tell my dad our idea to see if he has any thoughts. When I saw him earlier, he said he had to follow orders from his boss to remove all the trees. That must be so awkward for you. Our parents are environmentalists, and have always shared their love of the land. I told him I couldn't help him anymore and drive the truck. He seemed to understand. I wonder where he is right now. A group of young protesters has been spotted. It, it hurts me to see these people side with trees and birds over human beings. But have no fear, loyal supporters, for these confused children will not stand in my <coughs> our way. Progress shall be made, and to those who still deny the truth, you and I are not as different as you may think. Do I not stock your grocery shelves, fill your gas tanks, power your cellular devices? <laughs> Let's face it, you need me. Our geocache. Let's look for it. Oh, yeah, it uh, should be around here somewhere. 
What are we looking for again? It's a container. Gwen? Our family is not the same as it was before you left. Do you think you'll ever come back home? I don't know. I'll just get mad at our foster parents again, and they don't deserve that. I know things have been hard with the way they view the environment, but I know you can help them change their ways. They care about you. They listen. It's just a matter of finding what to say, right? And I'm here too. Listen, I miss going on adventures in that old town with you. I think it's time I come back. I mean, there's not even a treehouse for me to come back to. I'll take it as a sign or something like that. I'll let mom and dad know. They'll be so happy. Aw, River Otter. I was Aww. hoping we'd see one. Aww. Aww. Aww, so cute. You know, I'm still really worried about them. I want to come back here every day to take care of them. This time with mom and dad. What do you think? I love that idea. I've already asked mom and dad if they'll be willing to help us take care of them out here. And they said anything to have our family united. I can't. I miss having a real home. I can't wait to see mom and dad again. Lex, you brought our family back together. I'm so proud. You're my brother. Well, at some point we're going to have to leave this place. When we do, what do you guys say we hit up a real party? If you're not too busy at work, that is. Oh, well, all right, as long as you're not too busy protesting. Hey now, heroism won't get in the way of my friends. Let's hang out, the three of us, like the good old days. That's a great idea. I've missed our usual hangouts. Yeah, I'm down. I'll even bring my reusable straw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 stop! 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 Oh. stop! Sorry this happened, Asher. I know it wasn't my tree, but it meant a lot to me. It meant a lot to us. My dad had no choice, I guess. We saw there were others too. It wasn't just your dad. He told me he's quitting his job today. I know he feels really bad. Maybe he'll join us in our fight. Someday. When we tell our parents what happened, They'll want to get involved, too. Well, if you're going to talk to your parents, maybe I will, too. Maybe we can do it together. I would like that, Brock. Power numbers. Wait. It's the geocache! Oh, open it! It's a poem. Love Letter to the Land. Everything we do in this physical world will be felt by the earth, imprinted on the land. As long as we continue to take care of our Mother Earth, she will continue to provide for us as our Father Sky will watch over us. I love that. Wait, there's something else in here. Seeds. Someone left us seeds. Nice. I'm gonna plant mine. Right here. Lost 
And it was all due to the cost But there were those who protested Who refused any rest Some were conflicted Torn from the comfort To apocalyptic Still others took action Which took time just a fraction Friends hit the steel But spark the flame Rang out with the voices we will not be tamed Flint hit the steel would spark the flame Rang out with the voices The voices of thousands And we became the chorus Of the breath of the forest We will not be tamed Chorus of the breath of the forest We will bring the flame Chorus of the breath of the forest We became the chorus of the breath of the forest Thank you.